Hey guys, it is Alexis and Lillian and today we're going to chat to you about what we like to call the queer survival kit. So what that is is essentially some movies, books, shows, resources in general that have helped us personally in our journey of figuring out our sexual orientation and have helped us become the people that we are today. Mm -hmm. So a lot of you have asked us always like, can you guys talk about like your favorite LGBT books, movies, YouTubers and things like that? Well, we have briefly touched on that before in other videos, but now we're going to be doing a whole discussion about our favorites, the ones that we liked, the ones that we didn't mm -hmm. like so much. Yeah and the ones that really helped us a lot. And it all really comes down to preference at the end of the day, but yeah, this is just what we're into. Why we're calling it the Queer Survival Kit is because I think LGBT representation in shows and movies and anything in pop culture is really important. And it does help, especially those people who don't really have any queer friends and don't have anyone to relate to and are trying to figure this out all by themselves. So reading a book about a person's story that is going through this or seeing it in a movie or just seeing, you know, like a queer relationship, queer people to look up to, that is really important. And I know it really helped me when I was, you know, struggling with my sexual orientation in a small town in conservative Italy. Of course, as always, we want a lot of discussion on here, so share your favorites in the comments. And even if you're not looking for any more resources, always love a good film discussion or show discussion, so let's bring it on. <laughs> so before we hop into it, this video is sponsored by Care Of. Care Of is a wellness brand. They send you like a really cute little package every month with all of your vitamins and supplements that's curated for your needs and wants and goals. So you fill in a quiz, depending on if you're looking for something maybe for your hair or your skin, or you just wanna maintain a healthy lifestyle in general. Then they make the recommendations and then you select which one you would like. Then they create a personalized kit for you, which then you get every month. It's really cute. You get the package at the door. It has your name on it. It has different like mantras and challenges and goals for the day. It kind of just gets you on more of like a rhythm of like a healthy life. Style. Yeah, and this year 2020 or so far hasn't really turned out the way that a lot of us were imagining So yeah. we probably had so many resolutions and goals, but then it's kind of like, oh, now we're just sitting on our couches eating the whole time <laughs> Am I the only one? <laughs> so it's just important to keep at it with your self-care routine. We're both vegetarian. You can have a very iron-rich diet as a vegetarian, but it is a bit more challenging and we're not always the best at that. So we are taking iron supplements, both of us as part of this care of package. They don't make any grand claims like, oh, you're gonna be taking this pill and you like lose all this weight or something like that. But they're very realistic with what it can help you with. So if you guys wanna check it out, see what kind of recommendations you get, check out the link in the description box below and you will get 50% off your first order with the code Alexis and the land. All right, so our queer survival kit. Let's start with category number one, music. For myself, growing up when I was struggling with my sexual orientation, what really helped me was of course Tegan and Sarah. But back in the day when they were like indie, they were amazing and it was just, I loved how open and out they were about their sexual orientation. I, it helped that they were super cute. It was just important to have role models that were so, you know, like wholesome and talented. Chill, and nice chill and exactly. And I was like, oh my God, being queer is like pretty harmless. Yeah. Because <laughs> I mean, if you don't know anyone and I was like, oh my God, they're so comfortable with it. Like I'm going to be comfortable. But let's talk about the music. I absolutely love their album, The Con. I found out about them around that time. And of course, so jealous. It's just like an icon of music. What about you? Maybe some like more recent artists like Tash Sultana. They're non-binary, really, really cool individual. Not really sure about their new music, but whatever, right? Saint South, I found on YouTube, actually. And she's queer? And she's queer and she's like super cool. And uh, I remember Alexis was listening to a lot of her when we first met. Right? Yeah. Who I'm a fan of, who's like more <laughs> contemporary. Well, first of all, I Trust. Oh yes, Trust is, trust is good. Canadian, like, dark wave oh he's so sexy <laughs> handsome he's very attractive and his music is just like 
that's what my soul sounds like. <laughs> oh, it's very dark. I like all dark and sad and mellow things. So mm -hmm. yes. But he's, he also has a lot of fun, like, danceable music, yeah. so... Yep. And he's really good live. And... Oh yeah, this is her guilty pleasure. It's not my guilty pleasure. I love this guy. He's so cute. Troy Sivan. Oh my god. I'm so happy for, like, the new gay generation that they have, like, cute guys like that to look up to that are just, like, open and openly singing to, like, same-sex pronouns which even Tegan and Sarah were kind of not doing back in the day and like you know openly in a gay relationship in a music video I think this is so amazing his music is a bit more like guilty pleasure it's very poppy he has like one or two tracks and I'm like like lucky strike puts mm. me in a good mood like, I'm so and I love <laughs> and I love his dance moves they're like I like it <laughs> okay BRB <laughs> gonna go like swoon over Troy Sivan. Oh, if you guys are gonna find out, I'm I'm very into like gay male culture. Yeah, so. that's like all she reads, all she I thinks about. I don't know about, what it is. Dreams all about. about. <laughs> I don't know, I just, I don't know, I just love it. Someone else that we've been really getting into is Blood Orange. Oh yeah. And I really love Blood Orange because He's kind of like in the hip hop R and B genre, which a lot of times is like very yeah, like masculine, masculine driven. But he's totally has like the queer aesthetics and is openly, I think, bisexual or just like yeah, he's identifies just as his best queer. Life. Yeah, yeah. His music is amazing. He's so talented. So please do yourselves a favor, Blood Orange. I think the younger generation is listening to that Haley Kiyoko and like King Princess or something. I don't know. I don't listen oh, to yeah, that. I don't listen to. It. Up next, movies. Okay, so there are a lot of bad lesbian movies. Let's start maybe with the bad ones that oh, we didn't okay. like so much. Okay, I wasn't a fan. My friend and I went to go see Below Her Mouth in theater. I don't know. I think they could have like made it way better. It was filmed in Toronto. I was like ready to like represent. And then, yeah, I don't know. It was just not that good. It well, was very you... cheesy. It was like your typical like lesbian story where it was like this straight girl who had a husband who met this queer girl. The queer girl turned her. Uh, yeah, I didn't even watch it. One of my favorites is Lost and Delirious. I yeah. think we talked about that already. So of course but it's very like dark. super dark. I don't know. Yeah, I love the heartbreak in it and the emotion. It was Cause so it's more sad. And... Cause like everything's not like rainbows and yeah. sunshines all the time. But I do like some happy movies. I like... Okay, so movies that the were... The Wizard of Oz. I don't even like that one. <laughs> I haven't even seen it. But some of my favorite like queer movies aren't explicitly like in the LGBT category. For example, one of my favorite movies ever is Mulholland Drive. Mm. Best movie hands down. But there's there's lesbian scenes in that. Exactly. But it's not like, you know, like, like a when story. you go to the LGBT section mm. on Netflix, it's probably not going to be there. No one says the word like lesbian or queer, bisexual, anything in it, but it has a queer, a lesbian storyline in it. Seeing like love between two women on screen, I mm. just... I just love that because it's like something else, something different, something really beautiful. Yeah, and that kind of brings me into the movie Carol. It's like <laughs> so nice and like so pretty and like filmed really nicely. And again, it's like a different take on like a lesbian story because I think it's supposed to be set in like what, 1950 or something like that? The 1960s? Yeah, like something, something like around that. there. Obviously back then it's like everyone was very, very hush hush about being a lesbian or being gay. Like you just didn't do that. And yeah, so it's like a nice story to see set in that time. If you want to see a like happy-go-lucky lesbian film, Imagine Me and You is a good one. Oh, it's so cute. It's mm -hmm. also with Piper Parab or Parabo, I don't know how to From say Coyote that. Ugly. From Lost and Delirious. That mean. too. That too. <laughs> so yeah, that's a really good one. Also, Kiss Me is a Swedish film, which is kind of like similar. And I like that one because it had like very feminine, unstereotypical representation of I don't think I've seen it, actually. I think I have, it's but then nice. I turned it off or something like that. Excuse me? <laughs> Beautiful Swedish women? How dare you? Oh my god. Um, also, a Fucking Amal, which is actually in English called Show Me Love. I haven't seen that one. I yet. really liked that one as a teenager because it was about a girl sort of sensing that she was different and she was in a small town in Sweden, so me 
just a small town girl in Italy. Liam was related to that one. <laughs> it's good. Check it out. It's more like a coming of age movie, but like that's what you're watching when mm -hmm. you're that age, right? Yeah. And of course, the classic blue is the warmest color. Okay, can we just talk about blue is the warmest color? Some people hate it. I think it's an amazing movie. Like, yes, it's sad. Yes, it's like very long, but it's so like realistic. It's just realistic. Not the sex, but the rest. I think it's a masterpiece because of the very honest portrayal of the course of relationships. Mm -hmm. And how things kind of like fade apart and then people get uncertain and like they're not sure if they're ready for this or if this is like truly how they're feeling. And yeah, it's funny because this film seems to have turned a lot of people or like opened the mind of some women who thought they were straight. Mm -hmm. I once went on a date with a Brazilian woman who said, she, I think she was 30 or something like that, and then she said, yeah, it's funny, like, I lived my life as a straight woman up until last year, I watched Blue is the Warmest Color, and then I was like, damn, I have some feelings. And then she went to explore her side of like, wanting to be with women which before i guess she hadn't like fully been conscious of and then yeah oh and a lot of you have commented watch the portrait of the lady on fire yes and we are currently watching it we're about halfway through but i fell asleep because we were cozy in bed <laughs> and she always, wasn't too happy yeah i was like oh my god i've been literally wanting to see this movie for like we will weeks, continue it months actually yeah so we finally found it online but yeah we're gonna continue watching it tonight, okay, cutie? Okay. Anyway, there's a lot of other movies, some great, some not so great. If These Walls Could Talk too is good. Room in Rome was bad. <laughs> now, for a category that probably some of you have been waiting for. Favorite YouTubers, and this one's all hers because I don't watch any YouTubers. Um, Except Simpatico Dog Training, <laughs> number one fan. Simpatico Dog Training, shout out. <laughs> But yeah, I'm just thinking like when I was getting more into like YouTube and I was like looking up, okay, like who are some like cool queer YouTubers out there. I watched a lot of like Stevie Bobby. I watched a lot of when they were together, Shannon and Cammy. Um, so that was like your number one couple. I was like, oh, like their stuff's really cute. And I think they're like a super cute couple. I don't know, I actually haven't watched. I know Shannon and Cammy have like their separate YouTube channels now, but like I barely watch any like queer YouTubers anymore. <laughs> She's like on the vintage sustainable track now. Yeah. So sorry to disappoint that we don't have any other names. Yeah, I just don't really watch any vloggers. Yeah, I don't know she had them like on Instagram and stuff. So big influences for her. <laughs> Next category, books. That's not a secret that I love gay male romance. I recently started a new one, which is called um, Swimming Pool. Swimming in the oh. Dark. Swimming in the Dark. <laughs> Uh, I'm going through all of them, um, but yes, one of my favorites is of course Call Me By Your Name. I was not a fan of the movie, I thought it was a bit miscasted. Like, the age gap just seemed too weird, I didn't really sense the tension between them, a lot of people did, but yeah, I just wasn't really feeling it. Mm. Yeah, and like, I don't know, I think the, the film itself, the storyline and like the setting is really beautiful. Yeah. Weird. I liked Elio, I liked his... Oh, he's super cute. He's so cute, yeah. but then the other dude, I was like... Army Hammer. <laughs> um, but the book is a completely different story. Like it made me cry at the end and it's, the storyline is still similar, but it's different. And it's just the way that it's written. Like there's so much of the inner life that you find out of Elio. And it's just, I love anything that is about like longing. And I found out there's a term for what I like, which is slow burn romance. Oh. So I don't like books that are right away like, oh, I have my eye on this like guy or this girl and then they like have sex right away or something mm -hmm. or where it's like implied what happens. I want it to be like they meet and then they're like, oh, there's something about them and then it's like very, very slow so that by the time they have their first kiss, I'm like, oh my God, yes, it's happening. <laughs> God, <laughs> you are crazy. No, I love that. I did read some of the sort of like lesbian classics, especially again back when I was a teenager, but I don't know, none of them left like a particularly big impression on me. I did read like Tipping the Velvet, potentially even Fingersmith, um, Keeping You a Secret, Annie on My Mind, things like that. So it was nice to have like the lesbian storylines there, but nothing that I was like, oh my god, this really helped me. But I know that's different for everyone, so. TV shows. So for me, big impact was 
Buffy the Vampire Slayer, which is not like an explicitly queer show. There is a lesbian couple in there and this was one of the first shows that did that. I was just so into Sarah Michelle Gellar. At one point, my whole room was like full of her posters. So embarrassing. <laughs> but she was a great role model and I believe that she shaped in a way together with Kurt Cobain and Tegan and Sarah, who I am today. And yeah, I guess like going off of that, when I was a kid, I, for some reason, I don't know why, I really liked the show Xena the Princess Warrior. Again, because it was just like a strong woman and she had her sword and I was like, oh my God, so amazing. To the point where I actually even named my dog Xena. And- Gotta love those strong women. <laughs> so maybe at the time I had no idea. Like, How old were you? I was like 11. Mm. Yeah, so I didn't really like know I guess but maybe like embedded somewhere in there What taught me a lot was the L word um, which now is outdated and they have a new generation We started it, but then yeah, we couldn't finish it anymore. I mean Shane. She's just like still Shane <laughs> She is just like a lesbian cult figure at this point I did <laughs> think she was like super hot and like I wanted to be like her, but like who didn't want to be like Shane? I know, so chill and cool. And like, her first haircut. I was like, what the fuck's the, with the hair? But then I was like, oh, oh. I want that hair. <laughs> I want a cool blazer. Like that. <laughs> so it was just so great to see like all these lesbians or like bisexuals like different types on screen, of lesbians different relationships. Stuff. Like for me back then, I was like, oh my God, no one's home, putting it on. <laughs> oh my God. I got the DVDs. <laughs> Some newer shows, I guess this one's not that new anymore, but definitely newer than like Xena and like Buffy. But Orange is the New Black. There are a lot of queer characters on it and what the great thing about Orange is the New Black is also that they have Laverne Cox in it. Oh Trans. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah that Trans was, representation. That was really good. Speaking of prison shows, Wentworth, which is like way better than it's Orange is the New way Black. better and so underrated. That's so pretty underrated. much all we were watching before freaking quarantine happened, and then we're like, oh, we're like, hold on, what are we gonna do now? We have to be home all the time, and we don't have Wentworth. We watched the first episode. I was like, oh, this is like too like ugly. For but then me. they get you with the end. But then the end of the episode, I'm just like, we were like binge watching, on. and then I was like, Queen Bee. <laughs> Remember? Oh yeah. Ah, <laughs> uh, we love Wentworth. It's yeah. Such a good show, and yeah, definitely some queer storylines in there as well. Also, I think I've said this a billion times. Um, I even have the soundtrack, but San Junipero episode from Black Mirror. It's so good, and like I love like the whole like retro flair. How they go from like the '80s to the '90s, the '70s. Yeah, it's also sad, but. You know, sometimes you just need some sadness in your life. Anyways, if you haven't seen the episode, watch it. A queer, kind of queer TV show that we didn't really like was Gypsy. And that's surprising mm. because I love Naomi Watts because she was in Mulholland Drive, duh. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. I was kind of watching. I was like, mm, I don't know. I'm not buying this storyline. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm still confused about it. I, I don't even I remember finished what it. it was about. I finished it, but it was about like Naomi Watts who what is just like a woman isn't she like she has a husband and it's like meeting this woman that then is like into her and i'm just like Bleh. yeah turn it off i think as an honorable mention here it's just like as like a lesbian classic that i'm often compared to for my hair by people who have never seen a queer person before <laughs> is ellen degeneres and her ellen show oh yeah i'm ellen <laughs> I think she's a great queer role model. She came out in the 90s and that was super revolutionary. Yeah, but... like super courageous and just like went for it and everyone was talking about it. And she was like, you know what? Like, I'm not gonna just like hide myself because like this isn't okay for you. Yeah, so I, Ellen isn't like popular, at least it wasn't popular in Europe. So I never heard about her before I came to North America. What makes her so appealing is that she's like mainstream marketable, like all these house moms, they love her. But Alexis and I were talking about the controversy that more and more people are coming forward saying that she's actually not a very nice person like in real life. And yeah, that it's just so sad, just... which is like, Ellen, like don't do this to us. Oh my God, that's so sad. Like I, I always imagine like if I were to meet Ellen, which I will one day, no, I'm just kidding. I probably will never do that. Um, she anyway. always wants us to come on the show. I know, I'm like, Ellen, we family, man. But then she would be like, not even talking to like me. Like very standoffish. All right, so that was our queer survival kit, the best of LGBT 
pop culture. We would love to hear your recommendations because yeah, there's like so many films, probably so many shows, so many books, so many music icons that yeah, we weren't thinking of. All right, wrapping it up. We hope you enjoyed our queer survival kits. Again, these are just our opinions. Mm -hmm. And preference people preference exactly i feel like whatever we do there's always some sort of controversy and i'm like oh my god i'm so tired of <laughs> hearing this thanks again Kara, for sponsoring this video and making it possible go get your 50 percent off have a great rest of your day or night and we'll see you at the next one Cheers.